When was the last time you played volleyball or any team sport? Here in Germany, gyms and indoor courts have been closed almost all winter, so if you're a recreational athlete, odds are you haven't played in months. And I don't know about you, but watching events like the German Beach Trophy, I can't help but get this, you know, get this itch in my fingers. The problem is that getting back into sports after several months of not doing much or maybe not doing anything is a great way to get injured, especially when it comes to injuries such as patella tendonitis, which happens to be the most common knee injury among volleyball players. But looking around, you can see that it's, it's still a couple of weeks until the really good weather hits, so plenty of time to get ready and the exercises that I'm going to show you in this video will help you do just that by building stronger legs and by preventing knee pain. Let's start with one I used to hate. Okay, so you may be thinking, was it? <laughs> That's way too easy. And sure, if you kept up your leg training and did at least one leg day per week over the last couple of months, you can skip this one. Everyone else is better off doing wall sets for, say, at least about two weeks to build up some basic strength and endurance. Remember we're doing this to get the tendons ready for explosive movements and the best way to achieve positive tendon adaptation is through progressive loading with slow strengthening exercises that allow for a lot of time under tension and the wall sit is perfect for that. To do a wall sit, you keep your feet parallel and far enough away from the wall so that your shins are vertical. You can make the exercise harder by sliding the hip down to parallel or easier by not going down as low. Build up your endurance in the wall sits until you can do at least one minute with your thighs parallel to the ground. Then you're ready to move on to exercise number two. With this exercise, we're primarily doing three things. We're building stronger legs, we're further strengthening the patella tendons, and we're practicing eccentric movement control. And eccentric movement, that's when a muscle lengthens under load. So for the quads, this happens when you're landing from a jump. And you can have super strong legs and a fantastic vertical leap, but if your quads don't absorb enough of the impact energy, your risk of developing patella tendonitis will be higher because more of that impact energy will be absorbed by the patella tendons instead. And a very simple exercise with which you can practice all that at home is the slow squat. And to do the slow squat, you stand in front of a chair with your feet hip width apart and pointed forward, and then you sit back until your hip gently touches the chair. Then you push up again. The first couple of weeks, you'll do the two-legged version, and you can use weights to load the exercise if you want. The goal is to eventually transition to single leg squats to parallel, and one way to do that is by placing more and more weight on one side as you do the squat. So, for example, you could do eight squats with about 70% of your weight on the left leg, and then you do another eight squats with 70% of your weight on the right leg. And after a few weeks, you'll be able to do 90% on one leg, and then it won't be long until you can do single leg squats to parallel. The key technique points here are to keep your knee aligned over your toes and to keep your hips parallel to the ground. You don't want your knee to collapse towards the midline of the body. The pressure on the sole of your foot should be felt under the balls of your feet, your big toe, the outer side of the foot, and the heel. You don't want this pressure to move towards the arch of the foot. Only performance exercise with good technique. And if you're not strong enough yet, just do the easier variations for another couple of weeks. My recommendation is to work up to three sets of 15 repetitions in this exercise before getting back into sports. And I actually have to work on this as well. Now, since we're not doing the slow squat for rehab purposes, we can do it with a more regular tempo of taking about two seconds on the way down and one second on the way up. And now that we had some fun, what do you think about doing something that is not so enjoyable? What happens if you sit about 10 hours per day, train your legs regularly, and also do a lot of jumping? <laughs> Muscle tightness and to prevent knee pain we need to counter that muscle tightness by doing regular self-massage and stretching. So let me show you the most effective quad stretch I've found so far. It's called the wall quad stretch and I originally learned it from Dr. Kelly Storette. Set up in front of a wall and have a thick pillow or a folded blanket ready as a cushion. Now you kneel down and place the rear leg all the way up to the wall with your shin and knee touching the wall. And next you push up keeping your glutes and your core braced to maintain a neutral spine. 
You don't want to go into lumbar hyperextension because that makes the stretch a lot less effective and also places your back at risk. And if you're unsure about the correct alignment, you can do the exercise with a stick behind your back. Keep the stick in contact with your tailbone, your upper back and your head. There should be just enough space in the lower back region so that you can slide a couple of fingers through, but no more. And now you can experiment with how you need to work your core muscles to maintain those points of contacts and once you've figured it out, you can sink deeper into the stretch. And by the way, this lumbar hyperextension is something you will see in a lot of hip flexor and quad stretches. The rectus femoris of the quad muscles attaches to the front of the hip and the hip flexors also attach to the front of the hip as well as the lumbar spine. So stretches for both of these muscles will exert a force that tries to tilt the hip forward and that also pulls on the lumbar spine. So if someone does a hip flexor stretch like this, it may look like they're super flexible, but in reality that's because the hip is tilted forward and because of the lumbar hyperextension. Here's the healthier alignment again for comparison. Now let's get back to the wall quad stretch. If you're new to the stretch or haven't done it in a while, <clears throat> it will be tough, but eventually the quads relax and you can sink deeper into the stretch. Keep your breathing relaxed and stay in the stretch for at least two minutes and then do the other side. If your quads are tight, do this stretch at least once per day but I don't recommend this stretch if you're currently dealing with knee pain. If that's the case, check out the links that I put into the video description below. And if you want to do more, you can also stretch your calves and your hamstrings, but only if it's necessary, of course. And if you want to beef up your prep routine even further, you could also incorporate strengthening exercises for the calves, hamstrings and gluteal muscles. But even just the combination of the single leg squats and the quad stretches will already make your legs feel much stronger and more stable. And I know that the single leg squats may feel difficult at first, but let me assure you that they're definitely doable and they are a great way to protect against knee pain from volleyball because the slow movement will strengthen the patella tendons and the improved stability because of the single leg work will protect against acute injuries, not just of the knee, but also of the ankle. And if you want a PDF summary of all the exercises I mentioned in this video, you can head over to martinkoban.com beach, or you can use the link in the video description below. Now here's one more thing I just have to mention, but first, okay. If you're new to beach volleyball, maybe you've just discovered it through the German beach trophy, or even if you've already played recreationally for a couple of years, don't make the mistake that I made. I started taking courses taught by professional volleyball players at Beachzeit Berlin in October 2019 and yeah, it's a bit embarrassing to say this, but I learned more about proper technique and the game in general in six weeks with their coaching than I did over several years just playing on my own. And that pissed me off. And the reason that pissed me off is because I started thinking about all those years I spent burning the wrong movement patterns deeper and deeper into my nervous system. And that's damage I now have to undo in every single practice session, probably for another couple of years. My mistake was trying to learn everything on my own. So if I may give you one additional piece of advice in this video, it would be this. Find professional players near you and learn from them. Even just one single weekend seminar can change your game forever. That's it for today and I will see you soon.